Welcome everyone. Thank you for your presence in this workshop hosted by the Ranchi Association Education Committee. We ask you please during the meeting, please mute yourself if you are not speaking to avoid disturbing background noises. If you want to speak, please raise your hand and unmute yourself. Please use the chat only for webinar related questions. And if you can, please use headphones to improve sound quality and to reduce echo background noises when speaking. Please do not type when your microphone is not muted. This session will be recorded for future study purpose use. The videos will be made available to the public in the Urantia Association YouTube channel. If you do not like your image being used for records, please turn off your camera and ask to speak off the record at any time when you do not want your say to be part of the videotape. This way, your part will be cut out of the video during editing. Today, we have the participation of Lynn St. Pierre who will present the theme, The Divine Dance, A Challenge and a Joy. And now let me introduce you briefly, our dear friend, Lynn. Lynn received the Urantia book as a gift from her husband in 1996, but she was not ready for it yet. As her husband, Gaetan, was traveling around the world for the revelation, she could not quite understand his dedication for the revelation. In August 2001, she prayed God and asked him how she could help her husband in the spiritual work that he was doing. Six months later, she was touched by the spirit. And Lynn likes to say that as Paul fell off his horse, Lynn fell off from her high heel shoes. It was a sudden awakening. Not exactly knowing what it implied, she felt the immense responsibility and the enormous task to accomplish what God asked from all his earthly children, which is to share our understanding of his love so our soul and soul of others could expand. Nowadays, she is involved in many capacities in her local association with the foundation, and she created a women's group called the Daughters of God, which facilitates retreats for women and workshops all over the world to touch women's heart by exploring their dignity, their beauty, and their value, which are included in God's plan. Thank you, Dearlene, for your willingness to serve. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, like I was saying, I am so excited and it's a privilege really to be here this morning with you from all around the world. And what I would like to do is uh, I wish that every one of you would introduce yourself, your name and where you are from. We'll start by Rick. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Uh, I'm Rick Lyon, and my wife Susan sitting over here next to me. And we're from South Bend, Indiana, which is not a matter of a couple hours straight east of Chicago. And uh, we've been, we both found the Urantia book in 1978. And we've been involved as much as we can with the Urantia community and activities. And we're just thrilled to be here and excited about the workshop we're doing here today, too. Thanks, Lynn. You're welcome. You're Susan. And you are welcome. <laughs> uh, the next lady, um, I don't know, your name is C.C. Dudka? Yes, it's, it's Cecile, but everybody calls me C.C. And um, I'm, I've only been reading the Urantia book for about a year. Um, I have finished reading it one time, and I've been learning from online symmetry of soul and stuff like that and um I, I i'm close to tyler texas live out in the piney woods 
Um, it's called here too. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Welcome. Hara? Yes, hello. Um, I'm Hara Davis. I live on the coast in northeast England, so it's dark here already. Um, I came across the Urantia book um, in 2000 and loved it so much. I made lots of notes and maps and they turned into my study aids, which I'm probably known for. Uh, so that's me. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, Ara. Uh, Kay? Hey, Lynn. I'm Kay Cooper, and this is my husband, Bill. We live in Arlington, Texas, between Dallas and Fort Worth, and uh, we've been reading since 1970. I'll let Bill tell you how we got the book. Um, my mother was studying with a group in San Antonio, a kind of spiritualistic study, and she ran across the Urantia book, and she'd been giving me books for some time on um, theories of using one's mind to affect one's material well-being, and I had kind of rejected it as being too simplistic. So when she brought the Urantia book up for Christmas, she said, here, this won't talk down to you and offered it to me. And I read some of the foreword and said, you're right and gave it back to her. Um, but then a few weeks later, I wrote her and said, hey, send that book back. I think I want to read it. And since that time, we've been reading it and being amazed by it and in love with it. So that's how we came by it through my mother's studies. She is not much of a reader of the book, although she accepts it and um, still pursues her own spirituality and kind of seasons it with things from the Ranch book. Glad to Thank be you. here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And you're both welcome. Mm -hmm. Next person, I have a Marjorie here. Um, I'm Marjorie Ray, and I live um, uh, in the environs of Birmingham, Alabama. I received the book in 75, 70, late 75, early 76. Um, I was blessed with a uh, early, really amazing mentor in Jim Mills and his wife Eunice. And um, I've been a student pretty much every, ever since, and I had a study group in my home all these low these many years until about uh four or five years ago and we've now migrated we've all gotten older so we've migrated to zoom so we have a we still have an alabama study group you're welcome to join us on sunday evenings um at six o'clock central time and if you want that information uh to join the study group just let me know and um, it's great to see all my friends uh, on here, particularly my fellow Chaldean Collins. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, I uh, thank you, Lynn, for doing this for us. Thank you and welcome, Marjorie. Asin? I hope the communication is better now. Yes. Hello. I'm Francine Fortin. I live six months in the summer in Quebec. And I live in in Mexico. Now I'm in Mexico. And I'm going to try to disconnect and reconnect. Thank you, Francine. Welcome. Bennett? Good morning and thank you, Lynn and Jeannie. Good to see all of you. I'm surprised that I, I know more than half for a change. Um, I, uh, as the book tells us, uh, our search for God is evidence that God has found us. Well, God found me at the end of 1969 and about two years later uh, during a hitchhiking trip in Northern California. Uh, a gentleman showed me uh, the book, and he said quite sincerely, he'd been down to San Francisco for a uh, 
little trip and he found it in some nice bookstore. He showed it to me and he said, as sincerely as he could, I think I'm going to study this book for the rest of my life. Well, I'd never heard of such a thing and I laughed to scorn. So here I am studying the book for the rest of my life and happy to share a little time with you all. Where are you from, Ben Epp? I live in Terre Haute, Indiana. Thank I grew you. up in Southern California. Thank you. Welcome. The lady next to Ben Epp is Madame Belen. Belen, where are you from? Your name and where are you from? Unmute yourself. Okay, are you calling me, Lynn? Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's really happy that uh, I'm here with you today. Uh, I'm very new to your Rancha book, like maybe the last five years, but it is really a big, big gift to me that I really, really love it with your help, webinars, readings, seminars, and conferences, and I'm trying to digest everything, so. I'm really, really happy that I have the Urantia book. I am from Chicago, Illinois, but sometimes I, we go to Philippines to help donate books and have study groups there too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Belen. You're welcome. And I see that there is a Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Owen, and uh, we are in the um, Palm Springs, Palm Desert area in California for the winter. And um, I found the book in uh, 1981, I believe, and uh, had the pleasure and privilege of being in a study group from the very beginning, which uh, I'm so thankful for. I'm glad Thank to be you. here. Thank, Thank you. And welcome, Susan. Uh, I see Kathy and George. Just unmute. I think, are we unmuted? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Great to see you and thank you so, so much. We're um, together in this journey and we both discovered the Arantia book almost around the same time in the late, uh, well, we started to read it in the late 80s. We both had discovered it prior to that, but both of us went through the experience of not starting to uh, get in, into reading for a number of years um, yeah so we've been we've been having a great time with our relationship with our father and with all of you and we're just trying to learn how to do more on this planet so that Where we can from, Kathy? you know tell we're us from Winnipeg in, in Manitoba thank in you in Winnipeg Manitoba yes thank you and welcome welcome <laughs> thank you uh, Hi. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Nice to see I, you, Lynn. Yes, thank you. Nice to see you, Mark. I'm happy. There is uh, Louise Renault. So your name and where you're from, my darling? Bonjour. Hello, everybody. I'm from Quebec City. Um, I'm... I'm reading the book since uh, 2001, and uh, I'm studying the book too. Um, I've been in many, um, how do we call that, Lynn? The um, group d'études? Study groups. Study, study, groups. study groups. And uh, we have uh, our own study group here. Uh, at my home since uh, maybe five, six years, maybe more, five, six years. And um, I thank you, Lynn, for this opportunity uh, to see each other and uh, to get to know each other. Thank you. Thank you, Louise, to be there and welcome. Mary. Greetings, everyone. I am from Central Texas. Barry Huggins is my full name. And I discovered the book. I was gifted the book by someone many of you know. He was my uh, graduate French professor 
name is Jean-Pierre Udier, and he gave me a book, and I have been studying and reading and exploring this book ever since the late 80s. And then the, I would say in the last 10 years, I have discovered within the pages of the book that we have not only our father and Michael, but that we also have this beautiful being called our mother spirit. And she has um, bring, brought light to my life. And Thank you, welcome. Mary. And welcome. Thank you, and welcome. Louise, est-ce que tu peux te mettre sur mute, s'il te plaît? Uh, I see that there is Ed. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, I'm somewhat similar to Bennett. I found a book in, uh, or the book found me in California about 1970. And I traveled around through San Francisco and Northern California, kind of like a hippie type individual. And I've been, of course, it's been 48 years now. <clears throat> and I feel like I've just started on my journey. So even though the ages looks, looks like the age is set in, I still feel like I'm a real young person in this universe. Mm -hmm. I'm just really honored to be with you group of people. And we're going Thank through you. this. And this where are you from, Ed? I'm from Palm Springs, California. Susan Owen is my wife. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you and welcome, Ed. Thank you. Um, Collins? Hi, everyone. Um, I hope my um, settings are clear enough so that you can hear me. Uh, my name is Collins uh, from Ghana, Accra. In West Africa, and I found the book about seven years ago, uh, somewhere in the year 2011. And uh, well, I, I was I was just um, surfing the internet. I was doing some stuff on the internet, and I just found this book. I thought it was interesting, and it's been part of my life since then. And I was surprised that no one was reading it in my country, so I just started uh, with study groups, and I'm here today. Thank you and welcome. Uh, there is Agnes. Yes, hello everybody. Well, I'm from Belgium and I discovered the book in 2001. Um, I've been reading it, but I've had the opportunity to be taught by um, Musa and um from the senegal and uh well many years i've been working with him and it has been a very good approach for me because just the book itself would have been i think being alone uh, very complicated so i'm very grateful to god mm -hmm. to have understood that i needed to have somebody a big brother and uh, that's what happened to me so now i'm a big sister for many people. And I'm happy to be here. Belen, it's been a long time. Um, um, Marjorie as well. Well, we were in, uh, not with her, but with Rob in Israel. So it's all um, Israel coming back. So I'm very glad to be with you. Thank you, Agnes, and welcome. I see. Um, Mr. Galaxy, who are you? <laughs> Galaxy uh, 5 here. Is that me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, this is Alfonso Garcia. Can and you hear me? You? Yes, yes, yes. And where are you from? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Mexico, but I, I've been living in the United States for the last 45 years. And I've I found the book and 15 years ago, and it was <laughs> the best discovery of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome to this group this morning. Well, thank you. Le son est-tu mieux, Lynn? Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien? 
Oui, je t'entends bien. OK, je pourrais ah, commencer à me présenter. Euh, non, c'est bon. Could you say your name and where you are from? Dave? Okay, there is Gilles Mauroy. Gilles, would you like to say your name and when you, where you are from? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, Gilles from France. I'm here with my uh, two of my girls. We are in the car, so I apologize for the quality of the voice and I may uh, hear some part, you know, we may have some uh, bl uh, black, uh, I mean, some coverage issues. I've been reading for 30 years, travel uh, between the US and France. Uh, well, thank you, Gilles, and welcome. And that's it. Irma? Irma, could you say where you are from? Hi, thank you. Yes, I'm Irma Aguilar. I'm from Mexico City, but I live in Cancun many years ago, like uh, 34. And I, I hear a uh, talk about the book. Oh, sorry, because the doctors. Uh, I hear uh, uh, about the, the book um, some 25 years, but I begin to read. Um, 2009, and I'm studying now with uh, Jenny in in room Zoom Brazil, and I take some uh, obscures, and I'm here now. I appreciate too much. Thank you. Thank you, Irma, and welcome, welcome. Okay, and there is uh, Gaetan Charlin. Gaetan Charlin is the, the husband of Lynn St. Pierre. I live in Canada, Quebec. Sorry, I didn't put my camera. I wanted to conserve the bandwidth. And I've uh, met the Rancher book in 1979. I've been reading it since then. Uh, I mean, 79, yeah, I've been having a study group since 1999. And two study groups for many years. Uh, the last one of them uh, ceased to exist about three, four years ago. And we still have a study group going, uh, which is face-to-face uh, -face and virtual at the same time. Thank and you. And I'm still involved in the Rancher movement. Thank you. Thank you and welcome, Gita. Okay, so I think that um, we <clears throat> have introduced everyone here. Could you be on mute, Gita? We are hearing the little bird behind us. Um, okay, so I know it took a long time, but it, it's, it's so interesting to know who you are, where you're coming from, and how the revelation has touched us, that's for sure. Could we take just a few moments of, of silence uh, to begin with? And um, after that, I would like to add a few words of gratitude and then we will uh, be starting. So if you want to join me for two minutes in silence, and then I will do the um, moment of gratitude.
divine parents. We are grateful for this opportunity to come together as a brotherhood, learning from each other and being inspired by you, Father, by your spirit. We are grateful to our Tadajaster, leading us in all circumstances to do our best in living our lives and serving and recognizing opportunities that are offered to us to grow spiritually. We are grateful for the Urantia book, a revelation for all religions, an enhancement of truth for every soul on earth. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life, for all the blessings around us. And we pray that you fill us with joy and purpose every day. It's our will to do your will. Amen. 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 There is a quote in the Urantia book that really touches my soul and resonate with me, and I will read it. And it will probably be the only quote that I will be reading. Maybe. Um, it's at the beginning of the book where it says the religious challenge of this age is to those far-seeing and forward-looking men and women of spiritual insight who will dare to construct a new and appealing philosophy of living out of the enlarged and exquisitely integrated modern concept of cosmic truth universe beauty and divine goodness such a new and righteous vision of morality will attract all that is good in the mind of man and challenge that which is best in the human soul truth beauty and goodness are divine realities and as man ascends the scale of spiritual living the supreme qualities of the eternal become increasingly coordinate and unified in God, who is love. For me, you know, when they say, who will dare to construct a new and appealing philosophy of living? When I was reading this, for me, it was like, wow these people that will do that they must be like you know very high spiritually they must be really um, inspired and do many beautiful things not me no 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 i'm not i'm not good enough i'm not spiritualized enough but this came in the back of my mind all the time who are these people? And this is the beginning of the book, you know, it's uh, 2, 7, 10, which is paper 2, paragraph, uh, paper 2, uh, chapter 7, and um, chapter and then paragraph 7. Anyway, so it's the beginning of the book. <clears throat> And I was saying to myself, oh my goodness, these people, they, were, they, they, they are very, very advanced. But as you go along the book and then you read things, it's like, okay, God lives in me too. What am I doing for him? Come on, Lynn, wake up. Smell the coffee. Yeah. And... Um, so when Jenny asked me to do a workshop, I had to accept that invitation because of the challenge. 
because of the challenge to get out of my comfort zone because without any effort we don't grow we don't grow and i want to grow like everyone wants to grow spiritually so i did accept this invitation because then you know we are filled with potential and we need to actualize them so like you were saying at the beginning rick uh, before it started it's so good that you're doing this yes because everybody needs to do something um everybody needs to be inspired and inspired others after that we all have our qualities our potential and whatever resonates with me i can share after that with others and it's our privilege to do this god lives in every one of us how can we share his his goodness and his love is by expressing ourselves because people will see also so this is why it, it is called the divine dance really it's a dance and it's a challenge because for me it is a challenge it's always a challenge and it's a joy a few few days ago i was saying to geta geta i'm so excited you know <laughs> i'm doing this workshop and the excitement comes because it's new and i don't know what's going to happen i don't even know you know of course i had a plan but most of the time you plan and like my friend likes to say you plan and god laughs because you say i want to i want to say this and i want to say that and i want to say that and finally after that it's like okay i didn't i didn't tell them that because you need to leave the spirit flow and lead this conversation because i want to to have a conversation with you this is why it's not a webinar but it's a workshop a workshop is somebody that will interact with whoever is presenting right so um in the workshop is really sharing and learning from each other right and for me the title the divine dance a challenge and a joy is really a reminder of how i have been touched by the spirit and gradually i learn to dance with god which is really personal and unique for every one of us some people are very very intellectual and that's beautiful some people are more coming from the heart and it's beautiful too because it will attract all kinds of people you know we are unique in our personalities and um without any efforts there's no growth and how can i grow my confidence is by doing things by doing things <clears throat> and for me my father was not a person who was very encouraging self esteem not at all instead it was the contrary so this is why i need to get out of my comfort zone because god god gave me everything he put everything in me to to shine to let my light shine so whoever will feel um attract well will do something with that as well and really today even 
not only today, but at this period of my life, whenever I do something and I make mistakes, well, I just laugh about it because I cannot hold grudges, you know, against me. I have to go on and do and do what I have to do. <clears throat> and um, my spiritual growth has, has became something that started in 2001. Uh, one day I was sitting with a, um, a person that we had invited from Africa, which Agnes called uh, previously, she said that Musa was uh, the spiritual teacher. So I was sitting with uh, Musa outside and I was really feeling like I, I, felt, I, felt, I felt stupid in front of this man because he was so spiritual that I did not know what to say to him. And um, I looked at him and I said to him, you know, Musa, I love my husband so much that I would like to help him in his spiritual work, but I don't know how. And he recomfort me, he said, don't worry, great things will happen to you. And this is when it happened. Six months later, I was really touched by the spirit. And it really transformed my life. It really transformed my life. But then, you know, it transformed my life. And I did little things gradually. But. A lot of people know Geta and you know how he is a person who talks a lot. He's a person who's very, very opinionated. And I'm the, I'm the, um, I'm the one that is very low key. And one day he talks and talks and talks and talks. And I said, Geta, you're always doing the talking. You're taking out the place. And what he said, he said, Lynn, take your place. Those three words, those three words were the most important ones that he had ever told me. Beside, I love you. For me, when he told me, take your place, I was doing things, but I was always beside him. It's like he was, I was in the shadow because I did not feel up, I did not feel up to the plate. Is that the way you say it in English? And then when I decided, to embrace this divine dance that I do call today. Then God showed me opportunities, or He gave me opportunities and gave, and gave me a purpose. God gave me a purpose in my life. And from one opportunity to the other, the door opened. And if you want to dance with God, whenever the opportunity is there, you just need to grasp it. Grasp it and make this opportunity your experience. Because other opportunities will come by, but not that one. And this is what Viktor Frankl would say in his book. Wherever an opportunity is going by, you just need to Pick it up and make it yours, which I do now. And the dance is, you know, when you are dancing, you have a partner and you make the first step. And God is my partner. So I make the first step. God takes me in his arms. And then he will make me dance, which means that for me, I do the action, the first one, and then he will lead me. He will be the leader because God is the leader. He's always the leader. 
and well, from one step to the other, it leads to so many opportunities, many opportunities of growing. Um, and this brings me joy. It does bring me joy. Of course, it's the challenge, you know, can I do it? Can I do it? And then I say, sure, I can do it. Come on, Lynn, you can do it. I push myself. I talk to me and I say, come on, you can do it. You know, you're not, you're not alone. God is with you. You can do that. And after I have done it, it brings me so much joy. But sometimes we just have little challenges. And how we can be so kind to other people. And, uh, you know, do, do, do what is good as we pass by. As we pass by, like Jesus was doing. Um, I would meet somebody um, on the plane coming from a retreat in Chicago. And this man this year, it was, as a matter of fact, this year it was uh, uh, that experience. The man has not been sitting in the seat yet that already is engaging with me in conversation. You know, he said, oh, uh, you're not too squeezed in, in that seat. And I said, no, no, but this man is like six feet three. He's going to be squeezed in his seat, you know, like, Ugh. And uh, so he engaged a conversation. Where are you from? And what were you doing in Chicago? And he said that he was from, uh, I think, uh, Salt Lake City or some place, no, some place in Colorado. And uh, he said, what were you doing in, uh, in Chicago? So I said, I was, uh, I was in a women's retreat. Oh, yes. What were you doing? What kind of retreat, you know? Because... When you say you're in a women's retreat, they think that we're talking, 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 and having fun, or maybe, you know, we're, we're doing a, comment on dit, un cercle de tricot. You know, how do we knitting. say knitting. A, knitting a knitting circle, a knitting circle. So I said, no, 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 it was not a knitting circle. <laughs> it was a little bit more of a spiritual thing. So when I said spiritual, he went like this. Oh, yes. So he engaged right away. We spoke of spirituality, and he asked me where I took my information. And I said, well, I'll take it in a book. And I didn't mention the Urantia book right away, but he insisted. And after maybe an hour, I told him it came from the Urantia book. And he said, I'm going to look this. And I said, well, you could... Just download it on your phone if you want or on your iPad that you have there. He said, I will, I will, I will. So, you know, as we pass by, there's always something good that can be done. Really, really. And it's, it's, um, it's really a wonderful thing that when you can engage people, but on a spiritual level. On the spiritual level, this is what nourishes my soul anyway. You know, we can talk about the weather and what we do in life but besides this what is it that we can give so the other person is is feeling fed uh with joy and you know people like to meet people that are joyous and people that laugh and people that smile so we need to be that person i need to be that person um There is uh, one of our friends that has um, a saying, which is, your day is as good as your attitude, right? Your day is as good as your attitude. I just love that because you meet people and when you see that people don't, they seem down or they seem depressed, just say a nice hello and put a big smile on your face and it will transform them. It will transform them, you know, immediately like this because it's like, oh, it's like a waking call for them. It is a waking call for them. And um, 
maybe I could ask if any one of you would like to share something with me before I go on. Uh, Krasin, you are on mute. Can you hear me now? Is it good? Uh, when I saw the topics of this workshop, workshop I, uh, the, the, I was thinking about the signification for me of dancing with God. And then I start to try to imagine a dance like when I was worshiping and meditating and I would make the connection with a slow you know dancing is slow with someone and you're very tight and it's very comfortable that's the slow I would identify for worshiping and meditating then when I am praying I would go through the vals the vals is a is a kind of a prayer and I would dance so, you know, around, you know, the vows, I won't dance for you. And then the life's challenges that I get in the days, I sometimes it could be a cha-cha, sometimes it could be a polka, you know, the polka is very fast, right? Or it could be um, a samba, or when it's the worst, it could be a tango <laughs> of dancing with God and to make it, a different side because we think of God in so many ways we communicate with God in so many ways and also use him and as he uses us in our life so I really like this idea and the, what it it bring me and thinking thank you Lynn for this workshop and for letting me say well like I say you know inspiration is the key it's the key and in 2010, when I was uh, traveling with Gaetan and we were in Peru, I met with this wonderful group of women, all women that were uh, students of the Revelation. And mostly around the world, there are only men in meetings. Two-thirds men, one-third women. Now we arrive in Peru and it's like four-fifth women, one-fifth men. What's the matter there, you know? These women have inspired me so much that when I came back, I said to Gaetan, Gaetan, you know what? I would like to, uh, I would like to work with women. He said, well, maybe make, make a group of women and work with women. Yeah, you know. Uh, what will I, what will I be working on and what will I, you know, where and when and with whom? He said, I don't know, you know, I, I'm not a woman, make yourself a group. So I had a group of women for three years in Quebec and uh, we were reflecting on the question, why aren't there that many women in Urantia groups, even social occasions? are in study groups. So after three years, we found out that, well, there were uh, differences between us. Of course, we knew this already, but it's like we needed to reflect on it, put it on paper and see what we could do as women to get involved and, and have the machine go on, which, some of them did. Now, during this time, by the time I went to the first time in Peru and I was inspired to do something with the women here in Quebec, and then I was invited at the foundation to be on the trustees uh, uh, board of directors, I, I went back to Peru three years later to tell them, hey girls, I want to tell you, thank you because you inspired me doing something and I'm so grateful for you. And they looked at me like, you know, they were surprised, they were surprised. And while I did all these things and 
going around and being in women's retreat in Texas and then in Chicago and then workshops in many places in the United States. It just uplifts my spirit to see how women need to get together and share their own spiritual issues, their personal issues as well, which are sometimes different than what men do live. While I was in Amsterdam in uh, April this year for the international conference, I met, of course, with so many wonderful people. And this is um, a woman that comes to me and she said, Hi, Lynn, I'm, I'm from Peru. I said, Oh, you're from Peru. I don't know you. So she introduced herself and she said, I'm Mayram. I am Chi Chi's cousin. I said, Ah, you are Chi Chi's cousin. I love Chi Chi. So she said, Oh, by the way, Chi Chi says uh, she's inviting you to, to come and make a conference on. Uh, at our conference in October, and I looked at her, I said, really? You want me to go and make a conference in Peru? And she said, yes, yes, Chi Chi asked me to ask you to make a presentation. I said, well, when is that? She said, in October. I said, I need to think about it and see uh, what can be done. So when I came back, at the end of April, I look at my calendar and I say, okay, I'm going to go. So I said to Gaetan, well, I'm going to Peru. So you're going to Peru. What are you going to do there? I'm going to do a conference. <laughs> so, you know, from one thing to another, it leads. And when you are open, the spirit will just lead you. So I go to this conference and I see my friend Chi Chi. And she told me, you know, Lynn, when you came in 2013, I was ready to drop out because I had done so many things and it was not going the way I wanted. And when you came and you told us that we inspired you, she said, it gave me gas. So the way I see how the spirit works I was inspired, I did something, I inspired other people, they do something, and it's always upward, from inward to upward. Isn't that how the spirit works? It's just beautiful. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful of all of these gifts. And every one of us, in our own way, we all have our own experiences, of, of growing up and having these experiences that touch our heart. And we want to do something that sometimes, you know, it's scary. But for me, it's a challenge. And it's just, yay, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So please share. Who wants to say something? Hara, you are on mute. Yeah, I was, thank you, Lynn, for sharing. That's really interesting and very inspiring to all of us. Um, I was attracted to come to this webinar because I lead and teach um, sacred circle dance. And recently I've been in touch with somebody who suggested that there needs to be a, a website or some, some way of attracting people into worship. And worship should be through the arts as well as the spoken word. Uh, and there should be music and dance and, and art forms on this website so that people all over the world can just tune into it and be confronted with whatever way they want to worship. And I thought, oh, that would be amazing because I teach a lot of sacred dance. And um, I, put a, I put an article in the Circle Dance magazine, which has just come out, and now this week I'm getting all these people sending me videos of their sacred circle dances that they've been teaching. And it's so amazing because I'd never really thought of it before, how worship could be just watching this amazingly beautiful music and seeing these people move. 
So I just wanted to tell you about my latest little project. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, God takes what is, is filling us, what is filling our heart, and he will make it something much stronger, much beautiful, much, 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 much all the adjectives that you want. Because the intention behind our actions, these are the most important thing for God. It's not the big thing that we do, but the little thing that we do wholeheartedly with joy that he will take and make it such a big thing um, as a counterpart. And our thought adjuster, they know us much more than we know ourselves. They, you know, they, they chose us from Divinington to come down here and to live within us. And they knew at the time that they have chosen us what kind of personality we would have, what kind of qualities probably that we would have. And they work with this. So somebody that is very very intellectual the thought adjuster will bring them the most powerful challenges because they have great minds so they will be subject to you know big challenges and other people are more wholehearty more coming from the heart and they will be engaging with people that are the same. And this is what I feel the beauty of God within each one of us. Welcome, Andres Rodriguez from Bogota. <laughs> it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. So, any comments here? Yes, Kay. No. Yes, Kay. I just wanted to add a little bit to what you've been saying. Um, this is so much what life is about to me is the, the discovery of what we can give and do. And one of the things that what I wanted to add is that I have discovered that God also brings us into relationships with other people that make our abilities and our gifts work together in a beautiful way and and that goes deeper when you develop this this love of sister or brother that just pulls you together um and and create something new of your relationship, something wonderful and beautiful. Um, I, I find myself wanting to be with my spiritual brothers and sisters. Thank goodness I have a, a, a partner here with whom I share this, this joy in people. Um, I would truly be, be yearning to be with others then. Uh, but the people that I have developed this loving relationship, this this brother sister, uh, sister sister relationship, I want to be with them more and more because it's just so fulfilling. Um, so just just to kind of add that potential is there as you begin to follow what God has in mind for you, that there will be other people come into your life for whom you are destined, in a sense. So. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. I've learned that being transparent and intimate with people creates more transparency and more intimacy. And that's why people that are like uh, mind-like 
uh, how do you say that in English? Mind like? Like mind. Like mind. Mm -hmm. Well, we get together, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello? Yes. Can I share something with you? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, like I said, my name is Alfonso Garcia. And I've been reading the book for the last 15 years. And uh, I'll, I'm from Mexico, but I, I live here in Houston, Texas. And um, I retired uh, about a year and a half ago. <laughs> and I don't know if, if, it, if it's because of that uh, symptoms that you feel when after you retire that I feel like uh, lazy and nothing to do and and uh, you know I just I didn't even want to pick up my my rancho book to read but suddenly not not too long ago a few months back uh, I I uh, joined this uh, group from Miami uh, Uran Latinos Durante Latinos and I I asked him uh, when are you gonna have a conference or something so I can be there and he said and then uh, the, one of the principals, Ramon, he asked me, where you live? I said, I'm here in Houston. He said, well, I happen to be here in Houston. You want me to go visit you? He said, fine. So he came to my house. And, and uh, what, I like what he says, that he wanted us, want me to be there because there was something that I can uh, um, say, you know, or, or add to that conference. And that inspired me to, that inspired me to say, hey, you know, I'm going. So I traveled to Miami for a week, for the weekend and spend time with them and bring my joy <laughs> again, bring my joy back to, to, to me. Cause I just, I'm, I don't have a study group in, in Houston. At least I don't know if there's any, any, any study group nearby. And uh, just like uh, I've been isolated, like for I feel isolated for the last two years, you know, without a study group and and just to. But now, uh, now that I that I participating with the Urante Latinos, you know, like everything's come back again to me, you know, the willingness to to go went back go back to that to the to the study, and uh, I'm I I uh, I I. I feel some kind of a um, failure because my 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 real uh, I always wanted to have a, a study group in Spanish right here in Houston, but I never couldn't any do anything. You know, I contact people, but they don't they don't show up. They don't they don't they were not attracted to the book the way I we all of, all of us are. You know, they just want to know or have one book, but they don't want to compromise to come to read or anything. So I was very disappointed, <laughs> disappointed. So maybe, but what, like, uh, then when, when you said something about um, what you were talking this early today and about, I try to inspire others, you know, at, at any time or any moment, any person that I cross by, you know, happen to be talking to, I try to add something to that, to that, to their life, to their day, put a smile on their face, uh, say a word of uh, encouragement, and I kind of identify with you. Like, you know, there's always someone there that needs to have a, needs to hear a word or needs to hear something to be inspired. So I know that I, I might not be good about recruiting people who are a study group. But maybe I'm good at, at bringing joy and 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 uh, smile to others, you know. And that kind of like I said, well, at least I'm I'm good at something, you know. That's something that I just wanted to share with you. Okay. Yes, thank you, Alfonso. Thank you. Of course, you know we have different um, talents and qualities, but we need to just use them put ourselves in action, put ourselves in action. I couldn't say, yes, Kathy, I, I, you know, people that know me now, um, 
might know how the spirit transformed me because I was really not the Lynn that I am now 10 years ago. That's definitely not me. <clears throat> I was, I was shy, no self-confidence, no self-esteem. Uh, I felt like a shadow. I felt like a shadow. But yeah, God gave me a purpose. God gave me a purpose because I said, I want to. I want you. And when you say, I want to, <laughs> just watch out what you're asking for. <laughs> and, and it just fills my life. It, feel, it fulfills my life with joy. And, and I, feel, um, I feel part of this universe. Part of this universe. Kathy, you wanted to say something? Hi. Um, <clears throat> actually, I was I was saying bye to Kay, but that's okay. I'd like to say something. <laughs> um, I understand what you what you mean when you talk about um, self esteem, and um, <clears throat> I've always been what you would say shy when I was young. Um, I had a lot of difficulty speaking out, and even. Even now, I still find it um, not easy to, to speak in a group. I, it's not that I'm um, anxious about it, but I just can't find the words sometimes to express what I really want to say. And I love listening. I listen uh, to people um, primarily because to me, that's where I gain a lot of understanding about humanity and about um, just how to love people and for me my purpose on this planet is to love more and more people and and to bring to bring that love to others so they can love others as well and your your talk today in the divine dance um, <clears throat> for Mark and I it, it really hits home the quote that you read about uh, um, far, far seeing and forward looking men and women. That quote has been in our hearts for probably the last 20 years. And we started um, with Bill and Kay Cooper, and they taught us uh, a leadership retreat training, which we did about 18 years ago with them. And then we were leading retreats in Silver Springs. And all that process has really helped me to grow and, and to, in the Netherlands, even last spring I did a workshop there that wasn't easy to do but it you're right it brings you joy and it, it makes you feel that you're actually growing and doing something for God and for humanity um, Mark has something I think he might want to just share with you very quickly um, regarding the new um, philosophy. and new philosophy of living yeah um I understand that uh, what we need is to unify and uh, God is unification. Personality is where we coordinate and unify everything. So when we can sit in soul uh, and live with our personality doing the Father's will, um, for me it was how can I bring something to unify people, I I even believers in a, in a humanitarian movement who really <clears throat> um, or it ends with each other, and I couldn't understand why they wouldn't understand with this revelation that all they need to do is love each other. And so um, I was inspired to put together a manuscript, and uh, I'm just trying to um, what we're trying to really try to do is bring the people together who. I don't want people to think all the same thing, but come on the same track and move in the same direction. And uh, the first quote that's, uh, that you gave us, we haven't read yet, but I'd like to read it. It's uh, the, the divine riches of God's character must be infinitely deep and eternally wise. We cannot search out God by knowledge. Now, for me, the, what we call the Urantia book is a book of knowledge, of revelation, but <clears throat> it's not about the book. It's about 
what comes through from your heart within your soul when you're actually uh, studying this revelation. And so I think that if we start uh, bringing uh, our hearts into uh, our relationships uh, with anyone in the movement or outside the movement, um, it's not about how we understand or see God or, or do things. It's, it's more about uh, opening our hearts to the other person's heart and, and what they call the, the empathy stream. And you can feel uh, something that is beyond any kind of words that we can have and, and express. So what I tried to do with the manuscript that I put together, I called it a book of inspirations. And it's, uh, I've titled it The Universe of Siblinghood because siblings we all are under, under our one God. And as the Revelation also tells us, um, it, the, God is more like a father, but he is much more than that. But maybe as human beings, it's very difficult for us to understand that he could be other than just a father or a mother or a brother. He could be a creator way beyond our understanding as humans. So this is why I put this together to try to bring people in, in, a, in a unified direction of living. And uh, thank you for listening. The end of that quote is, but we can know him in our hearts by personal experience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both. Yes, Ara. Yes, Ara. You're on mute. Yeah, I'm just saying I have to go. I'm sorry, but thank you. Okay, well, thank you for being with us, Ara. I know it's late and you're up. And yes, would you like to say something? Well, yes. When I saw the title, <laughs> and <clears throat> I love dancing, but I've got that strange way of wanting to lead the dances. And um, so uh, I said to myself, well, with God, I'm going to have to let go. Let go, let God. But uh, it made me smile because um, I actually like leading. I, 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 I taught my children how to dance and so on so i was the leader and with god well i have to be to accept to be led and of course well the places where he brings me is exactly where he wants me to be and well last week um on tuesday i was not feeling very well and um nevertheless i i went to my uh, um prison ministry and that night when i I was thinking about what had happened in prison with the inmates. I felt, because I was really bad, and I felt before I wanted to go to prison to change them, now I want to be with them because I just appreciate being among them. And something had shifted in me. It was not that I wanted to uh, bring whatever. It was, I just want to be there because I feel myself at home with them. And that minute I felt that there was a very big change in me because I could, I was accepting that God was leading me in that as well. And that it was not as much as what you can bring them in matter of, um, of ideas or things like that. It's, the love that I come in with and it's not my love it's God's love and I just want God to have the opportunity of of um, of loving those people who have very much suffered of a lack of love and at that moment I felt that there was a shift in me and it's another way of dancing my life in that place so I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Agnes. This is, um, it must have brought you so much joy when you do realize this. It, it's like, it's like you feel, you really feel the presence of God within you. When those moments, those moments that he is given to you 
are so precious. You know, I know that God is within me, but sometimes I need, I need the confirmation just a little bit louder. What did you say? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know he's there, but I can, I can have a confirmation through our relationships. Uh, like Kay was saying previously, are through something that is happening precisely in my life at this present moment. I think that we are not robots and we need to feel this, this presence. And some people do feel it or sense it stronger. But for me, it's very, very smooth. And I like that, but sometimes I would like a little stronger confirmation. <laughs> yes, Bill. I think I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Good. It seems to me that the dance that we are called to engage in is a dance of love in all circumstances. That means you love your enemies as well as you love your friends. I don't mean you love them the same way. Um, you have to kind of explore what love means in different circumstances. Love is more uh, warm with people with whom you feel comfortable being intimate and exposing yourself and having them expose their weaknesses and their strengths to you. But love, the desire to do good for others in spiritual terms, the love and the desire to bring spiritual fruits into the lives of others is something that you can engage in with enemies and people that you really don't like very much. Not just, they're not enemies, they just, you don't care for them very much. Uh, I, I pray daily now for some of our politicians who are not very popular with me because I think it is good for them it is good for our country. It is good for our world if they be brought into uh, spiritual alignment, into loving alignment. Because the fruits of the spirit are loving fruits. They are, they are love. They are tolerance. They are uh, patience. Uh, they are lots of things that revolve around the central core of love. So I identify the dance that we should engage in as always being the dance of love. When someone gives you a reason not to be loving, you find a way to be loving nevertheless. Very artful, very dancey type of behavior. Um, so I just wanted to bring up the what I think is the central core of this life that we're supposed to be living in the flesh. And that is finding ways around our tendencies to be unloving, to be reactive in ways that are even vicious, and to find ways to be loving in all circumstances, loving in the sense of desiring good for those that we come in contact with. And it is a joyous way of living. It is rewarding immediately to the person who is doing it because you feel the love of the father flowing through you to those other people. And that is a joyous feeling to have. So your reward is immediate is also in the future. There is a reward to be had. You can't force it on the person that you're trying to benefit. You can't force the benefit on them, but you can help present it to them so that the celestials working in their way can have more effect. It is a loving behavior toward the celestials as well to do this because it cooperates in things that they're trying to achieve. So it's dance on a lot of different levels. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. Go ahead, Bennett. Uh, thank you very much. I learned a lot uh, hearing from different uh, sisters and brothers about their uh, expression of the dancing, the divine dance, either by individuals or with partners or with the groups. Uh, because we had 
uh, Lid, you have started with the uh, paper 2710 about the, the, dare the daringness to construct a new and appealing philosophy of living. And I think all of the witnessing or all of the experiences shared just kind of bring back to me this statement that you had that we dare to construct a new and appealing philosophy of living. We dare we are dancing the polka or the chacha, or we are into the ministry or pre, uh, to the prison ministry, or are we in the aerobic dancing, or are we in the conferences? But we're really there to construct a new and appealing philosophy, which comes in many, many forms. The diversity of God's love and the diversity of the creatures of God are there, and we are unified under his love. Thank you so much. Thank you, Belen. Go ahead, Benet. Thank you, and uh, thank each one of you. I originally had just one thing to say, but thanks to the blessings of all of you and the insight that you carry, uh, I now have uh, four things to say. I will try to say them briefly. Um, Bill, and what you talked about love, uh, I was having a similar series of thought processes a few years back um, over a much simpler issue, but the, the answer still seemed to be the same thing. And uh, what I came at, the insight that I came out of it with uh, was simply this, lead with love. We have a lot of choices in which we can respond to people and circumstance, but lead with love. And uh, Kay, you spoke about being shy. And uh, I, um, I'm not sure that I'm not still a shy person, but I was very shy when I was young. I don't think I could get anybody that knows me to believe that I'm shy today. Uh, but there is something in that process that um, came to light just earlier this week when I was at a uh, meeting in Colorado, and it goes like this. Uh, trust that you know, trust who you know, meaning God, and trust what you know. And when you think about Jesus walking with a few of the apostles on the beach there during uh, the time of the resurrection, he asked them, do you trust me? And we can see that theme interwoven throughout the, much of the story in the Arantia book. And I think when we trust, we put ourselves on a level where these, the dance can take place, which is what we're really talking about. In Anya's, uh, the very first conference I went to, uh, I had read alone for 24 years before I ever got together with other students of the book. And uh, the man who was teaching a workshop was a psychologist by trade. And he said something that has stuck with me these 25 years or so since then. And he said, I used to think of myself as a mechanic. I was going to fix people. He said, now I look at myself as a farmer. I plant seeds and try to help them grow. And Lynn, when you spoke of intent, uh, that, that idea that we are taught in the book, we're taught in the Bible, uh, we're taught Jesus' lesson of our intentions being the way God really looks at us. And when you think of it in a more personal way with the adjuster, living inside of us and knowing most of all of our growth, knowing who we were before they volunteer to work with us. It is said that we are, uh, the adjuster makes a transcript of all of the decisions and all of the things that we try to decide in our life. And here's the difference. Our decisions may be really good some days and we may stumble into a uh, a great big mud puddle on other days, all from the same kind of intentions. But the adjuster takes them and lends the truth and the real intent from a spiritual level and tacks that up in the Marantia world as our transcript, as, as who we really are and who we're really becoming. And uh, every time I get into thinking about this, I am even more fascinated with the fact that God does everything with us, and we gradually catch up to that over the course of eternity. But our intentions, what we really desire, what we care about, 
these things are laid up for us in heaven as our treasure in heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. How come nobody yes. dance yet? Yen, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I would like uh, first to say hello, Guy. Nice to see you. Welcome. Uh, I would like to ask you if you can speak to us about how we can transcend to the spiritual level to feed our soul and to transform ourselves uh, doing the will of the Father in a better way according to our teachings. That is, I don't, I don't know if I express correctly my question. Thank you. To whom your question was addressed, Jeannie? To you, Lynn, sorry. Oh. <laughs> wow. Jeannie, I think for me it was a process. I felt miserable in my life for a long, long time. I felt like I had a hole in here which was not fulfilled. And in my life, I had good teachers, good teachers, all along my, in my life. Now, one of these teachers was my husband. Not because he gave me the book, but because for 10 years, he taught me without mentioning that all of those teachings are his thoughts were coming from the Urantia book. <clears throat> he was always um, speaking how he would act with his, one of his supplier, why he would say this to an employee that has stolen from him, why he would not um, he would not adhere to such a such a thought or an idea from another person. He was always teaching me without me knowing. Okay? He taught me for ten years between nineteen ninety two and two thousand two when I was born of the Spirit. The moment I was born of the Spirit, I can tell you, because like I said, you know, like you said in the intro, Paul fell off his horse. I fell off my high heel shoes. It was like, Ugh! oh my gosh, what is happening to me now? That moment I saw in my mind, the adjuster showed me things. And he showed me that Geta was teaching me for those years without telling me that it came from the book. And gradually, it inspired me, of course, because when you are touched by God, by the Spirit of God, something happens within you. Something happens within you. And at that moment, I said, because I was in a little... I was in, in a little group with my friend Guy, my husband Gaetan, and Musa in Senegal. <clears throat> and while Musa was talking, I had tears that were running down my cheeks. And Guy Perron looks at me and he said, Lynn, do you have something in your eye? I said, no, I don't have anything in my eye. But I could not express what I was feeling then. It was, a, it was such a strange feeling. And, and then what I was feeling, it was something that came from down here and went up, up, up. And then I opened my mouth and I look at Musa and I said, with what you are saying and what I understand, never again I'm going to shut my mouth because I need to share God like you do. And then I close my mouth and I say, oh my gosh, what did I say now? Because I did not know God. 
I did not know God. And this is why I felt miserable those, those years, those past years. And then God was there. He was showing me a way, a way, but I did not know. I felt that burden on my shoulder. It was like, oh, that's too much. I don't know God. And then I was part of the study group home, but I was not the student yet. I was just reading the book in the study group. So I decided to go and say, okay, what are they saying in the book regarding Jesus, uh, not Jesus, but God? And paper one was the universal father. So then I began reading by myself that book. And it opened, you know, gradually it did open because then I knew that I was transforming myself. I knew that I had to do something for God. God did a huge thing to me, but I had to do something in return. And how is it to serve? I started with little jobs. I'm still doing little jobs, but I think it's, it takes more time to me. But I was doing little things. And as, as often that I would do something, I felt joy, more confidence, and God was changing me. God was changing me. How to do the will of the Father? I think that when you are born of the Spirit, I can say for myself, when you are born of the Spirit, you have this urge, you have this strongness within, within you that you want to do something. And something, you know, you just have to say, yes, God, I want to. You need to choose and you need to decide. Until you have not decided, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Opportunities will be there, but you won't, be, you, won't, you won't see them because it doesn't touch you. If you have been touched by the Spirit, you will act. That is for sure. And gradually, what happened to me is that from one thing to another thing to another thing, it led me to, to do what I do today. And it's a joy. It's really a joy. And um, it's wonderful. Yes, Bill? Finding my unmute is sometimes challenging for me. I wanted to respond a little bit in terms of specific techniques, Janie, that you might use to uh, keep yourself in contact with the inner spirit, because it's that inner spirit that you're seeking guidance from, and it is guidance in terms of love that you're going to get. That's what you're going, that's what the spirit is going to do for you. It's going to say, hey, Here's an opportunity for you to be loving. And you're going to make a choice in the moment whether to do it or not do it. Uh, if you do it, you are doing the will of God. Uh, and you can, you can predict that knowing ahead of time that God wants you to be loving. What we're, going, what we're trying to achieve in eternity, not just this lifetime, but in eternity, is to grow to be loving like God. High standard, over the top standard. Anytime you have a question of, am I being loving enough? The answer is no, you're not. Do the best you can and move on toward eternity. It'll get better. But two techniques that you can use that will put you in touch with that spirit within. One is prayer, but uh, it's, not, it's not prayer the way a lot of people practice prayer. It's prayer where you listen and respond and communicate with the spirit and ask questions about what you think the spirit is saying to you. Well, now, do you mean so-and-so? And, oh, that would mean such and such, wouldn't it? And then you take that, you take your impression from that, and you go out and try to live it. And if it works, uh, wonderful. If it doesn't work, you need to rethink whether you have misinterpreted or not. 
It's not that the Spirit's misleading you. The big trick is an our being in contact with the Spirit and interpreting what the Spirit says to us accurately. So I take the responsibility when things don't work. It's my interpretation that's wrong. It's not what the Spirit's telling me. Now, the other technique is somewhat akin to that, and that is journaling, spiritual journaling. A lot of people are doing that now. And uh, it, it's a wonderful technique to write down the thoughts that you're having when you're in your, your meditative in the sense of contemplative state of mind. It's not meditative in the sense of erasing everything from your mind. It's meditative in the way of a Christian and I think perhaps Buddhist meditation of you take a concept and you think deeply about it and you play with it and you focus your mind on that. Uh, let's say it's a value. You know, how can I be more loving or how can I be more tolerant? And you ask the question, you write the question down in this journaling technique. You listen, you get an impression, you write the impression down. You ask another question related to that. Well, how do I do that? And you just follow through and you write that down. And uh, that is often very meaningful in the moment, but even uh, in, the, in the future, I run across things that I've done that way 10, 20 years ago. And I read them and say, wow, did I know that? I'm not sure that I know that right now. And, and what I get from that is that the Spirit was speaking to me, and I didn't grasp everything that the Spirit was saying at that time. And now that I've grown a bit, I can pick up even more from that. So the spiritual journal process is something for now. It's a thinking process. It's a get in touch with the Spirit process right now. But it's something that you can enjoy in the future as well. You can enjoy benefits from it in the future, not just, oh, isn't that sweet? But, oh, my goodness, I knew that, and I've lived the way I've lived. Um, I, better, I better make some changes in the way I'm going because I now understand that differently. So the two techniques are a prayer technique of, of asking and uh, communicating back and forth, and then a writing down that is very much that same process, but it's a writing down of it. And uh, sometimes the things you get are just absolutely wonderful and, uh, and consistent with uh, my understanding of the will of God for us being uh, learn constantly to love better. Thanks. So beautiful. Thank you very much. It yes, is, this is what uh, it is called spiritual receptivity. Um, what you say? Uh, yes, Am Jay. I, is there something I need to respond to? I didn't understand. Sorry. No? It, it, what you said about the second part of the technique, it is the spiritual receptivity or worship, true worship. Uh, anytime you are admiring the qualities of God, you are worshiping, and I would say that this process is a worshiping, a worshiping process. Now, you bring it back to prayer when you're asking for things, even when you're asking for spiritual things, but you're very close to worship because you're in high prayer when you're asking for spiritual blessings rather than material blessings. We spend a lot of our time in prayer asking for material blessings, and because I believe that all prayer is good for you in, in bringing you together in consciousness of contact with God. And anytime you are conscious of contact with God, you're very close to worship. You're, you're admiring, you're feeling the presence of God, and it's wonderful, and you're just uh, glorying and grateful for it. That's to me, that's worship. So I would say, yeah, it's worship. Thank you. Thank you. you want to say something? Yes, uh, Well, I want to say hello first to Bill Bennett, Marjorie, and yes, you, uh, Nathan, uh, Francine, Rick, 
and uh, Gaetan, everybody does it. Mark and Kathy. I was in a UBIS meeting. I wish I could have joined earlier. But uh, Lynn and I talked uh, quite lengthy yesterday about uh, what she thought would happen. And uh, I'm happy I catch some part of it. You know, I think we don't know much about praying. And uh, I remember when Gaeta and I were going to all the study group in the uh, early 2000s, in, um, in Canada or in Quebec, we reject religion, organized religion. And at the same time, we reject prayer and worship. And uh, it's been difficult for people to understand the power of praying when you're rejecting it. And uh, there's a other level of praying and uh, we're pretty blessed that the chief of the Midwayer is sharing that with us in paper 191, the last uh, section about effective praying. It's a very powerful thing to do. And basically praying is to make yourself available for service. And the more you pray in group, if you pray in a circle of trust, you no know, Parker Palmer talk about creating circle of trust because the soul is shy and the soul is afraid of sharing what's happening within. But if you're able to create a, a circle of trust in either your study group or even a small circle of trust with your husband, your partner, or even if it's three or it's good, because then what you gain from what the other uh, are doing, it's, it's pretty uh, amazing. You know, in study group, we always pray at the beginning and at the end. You know, some people at the beginning didn't like it, but it certainly raised the level of our sharing. Because then it's sharing. It's not argumenting about a comma or a, a dash in the book. It's about how can I live the teaching and what can I do to improve my usefulness to the other because basically that's what spiritual life is all about is uh, how can i help how can i plant seeds how can uh, and uh, as bennett said earlier when i joined it it's not about me being the teacher or the sage on stage it's about what is the need here and how can uh, god fulfill that need by being a humble messenger that will Sometimes it's just listening, and it's it's pretty powerful. That, and I know Lynn is uh, really good at that. And in the, the workshop that she lead with uh, other people, uh, other women, there's a lot of, uh, I, I don't know if you call it sacred listening, but this is a sacred moment to listen to the other person fully and uh, consciously and all to the, the end because... It's not about giving what you want to give. It's about giving what they need. And uh, that makes a, a big difference. So I thought I would join and everybody would dance, but I guess the dance is happening at another level. It is at another, at another level. You're okay, right. Okay, very good. I like to dance, so. Yes. Uh, Gaetan, you want to say something? Yes, I want to... Uh... To thank Bill for what he just shared about prayer, it's really enlightening, you know, and it, it's true that when we start praying, we, we start making contact with, uh, with God that lives within us. And many people that we meet, uh, they don't always understand that, you know, what worship is all about. You know, some of them think it's about uh, praying, some think it's about uh, chanting or singing and togethers or playing music or whatever. And some people are not good at singing or playing music, so they wonder, how can I, can I really worship? You know, we see those church where uh, a lot of Negro people use chanting or music, you know, and they say they're worshiping. Uh, I don't doubt they're worshiping, but I think there's more to worship than just playing music and, uh, and dancing or whatever. And uh, one of my experiences was worship one time. And uh, it was very simple. After a meditation, I was sitting in the na in nature environment. 
on top of a hill overlooking a sea. And after my meditation, I open my eyes and I look at all the beauty of the world. And I was thinking about Jesus when he sat on a hill and looked, you know, the uh, the nature surrounding him. And they, they say that Jesus worshiped a lot in nature. And as I was looking at, at the sea and feeling the wind and smelling the, the salty air, my mind went to God and and I thought about what 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 can I give God in that unique moment? And just one thought came to my mind. The only thing I can offer him is what I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I sense. And at that moment I offered all my sense to God. I share with him everything that I felt, that I saw, that I smelled. And everything in that simple moment, it's like my mind was elevated. And from that experience, of course, you know, I cannot repeat it that will, like I'm going to go out and say, okay, God, I want to feel that same experience like I felt one time. But from that experience, I've learned that even when we, we help other people, at that moment, if we become conscious of God within us and the act of loving the other, we can offer to God that experience, what we feel at that, at that special moment of service. When we drive, sometimes I drive and I look around and I look at the weather. It's a beautiful weather. And I'm thinking about God. Well, God, I'm offering you what I see. Look at the beautiful sky you created. Or at night when I look at the stars, you know, I, I'm always, uh, my mind is always being elevated when I look at the uh, all those stars in the skies. And, and then I think about God, and I say, well, look at the universe you created, how beautiful it is. Look at it through my eyes. And, and for me, this is uh, some kind of worship also. And, they, and probably everyone has their own experience of worship. And I think that if we would share those experiences that we have with each other, we would enhance each other's perception of God and how to do worship. Because there's so so many misunderstanding about worship, but it's a it's a practice that's so blessing, because it elevates our mind. It's the same thing as uh, Bill said about uh, meditating on the qualities of God. I remember meditating on the absolute of God, on the infinity of God, and the love of God. And every time when I do this, uh, I feel my mind is being elevated. It's the same thing when I look at nature and I look at flowers and how they're made. I look at the body, how God made our body and how the body is so complex that uh, because I know God is part of that plan, then I feel again elevated because I thank him for all this beauty, complexity. And, uh, you know, everything that he taught about is, is intelligence. And we need to share more of those experiences. So, and probably there's a thousand, millions more ways of uh, of uh, worshiping. So this is, a, I think so. Th when you do share experience like you, you do here, well, it elevates the mind of everyone and the spirits of everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Geta. Thank, thank you, Geta. <clears throat> anyone, <clears throat> excuse me, anyone else? Collins, would you like... Yes, Jenny. Collins first. First. Collins, would you like to add something? Yes, uh, thank you, Lynn. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to be part of this uh, webness. And today, I'm glad that I was able to get that opportunity. And after listening to all that uh, has been said, especially at the beginning uh, when you were trying to explain uh, why you chose or why you have the topic as a dance, uh, a divine dance. And uh, we're trying to explain, I think whether it was you or somebody else explained that when you're dancing, especially with a partner, you take a step and you look at uh, what the next uh, person is doing, especially if the person is in charge of, of controlling the, the pace of your dance and everything. And I was thinking, okay, now how do you do that with God? I mean, for, for God, <laughs> all we know. Uh, and if I have to dance with God, then I would have to lose myself. It's like losing myself to everything that he is. And I like um, 
uh, liken it to the part whereby you do not have any fears. Yes, and I think uh, you started from the beginning where uh, sometimes we see all the challenges around us um, and we are so much comfortable at our comfort zones. Uh, what we've been doing all this time, how we've been um, sharing our life, how we've been sharing God's word with everyone. Pretty, pretty much most of us get comfortable at <laughs> what matters and how we've been doing in that seems to work. And usually nobody wants to get into new areas where there are challenges and there are possibilities of failures or encountering people and circumstances that you do not know how to respond to, you know, and, and that is where the dance comes in. Because when you're dancing, I don't know about you guys all, but here when we're dancing, especially in Africa, we lose ourselves. I mean, nothing matters in our environment anymore. You know, we are drumming, we are jumping. We're just going with the rhythm, you know. It's like something else takes over, you know, and you just go along with it. You don't care about what the next person is standing uh, beside you, what he's thinking, what he's saying. You don't care about your steps. It's the rhythm, it's the drums, it's the, everything that is controlling the entire experience and relationship. So, yes, uh, what have I learned out of this session is to not be afraid of what lies ahead in this walk with God and when all that we're doing in sharing his word this message is to get along you know flow along with the rhythm and trust him and dance along with him not to mind what anyone else is thinking or not to mind what what is going to happen what is going to go wrong or what is going to go bad just trust him that hey this is dance nothing can go wrong <laughs> especially when you're doing it with god nothing can go wrong just move along just go with the flow and and do your best and everything is going to fall in place yes so i'm glad i've been part uh, and seeing you all giper on gaitan um marjorie uh, suzanne every one of you and and i'm 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 enjoying the experience so far thank you so much collins Yes, Rick. Lynn, I've been sitting here through this whole time, and I have to say that I'm really deeply touched and a little bit emotional at the moment as this vision you've shared with us of dancing with God has really touched me. And there's a, there's a quote in the book about, you know, going to partnership with God. When you go into partnership with God, great things can and do happen. And I often remind myself of that. And I think sometimes I tend too much to make God my partner or my coworker rather than uh, dancing with God, as you put it. The you leader. Know, yeah. And then, you know, when you're dancing with someone, uh, you're very close to them and you're touching them and often you're they're touching you in places that you're normally not comfortable with being touched and but yet you're open to that when you're dancing with someone and uh, I think what has happened to me here today is my relationship with God has taken a turn here from being a co-worker to someone I am dancing with and more personal with even though I thought I was deeply personal with with God before today it's this vision of dancing with God is really transforming, I think. And then the other points you made about working, uh, the opportunities that come our way, you know, I've experienced that too, that when you invite God into your life and you open yourself up and then invite him to use you as the tool for whatever God wants to accomplish, you know, great things do happen. And, uh, you know, I, I would just, on that thought I would just remind us that you know when Jesus sent out the apostles two and two you know he told them you know don't worry about money don't worry about your material needs or where you're going to spend the night and don't worry about the words that, because you'll be given the words to say and I know during my time in the Urantia community with you know I was uh, a very shy person and I was like yeah, I, you know I remember the first time I ever stood up in front of a pe in front of people and gave a your answer presentation i was so scared that i still today don't remember what i said or what i did <laughs> you know it was just 
it was just that way. But but now I can do it, and uh, you know it's just a transforming thing when you allow God to use you as the tool, and you, and you're open to that. So, but this vision you've given us of dancing with God is a very powerful thing, and I thank you for it. You're welcome. Well, I changed the title a little bit. It was the divine dance, but of course, the divine dance is to dance with God. Yes. So, um, I think, yes, Jenny. Thank you, Lynn. I just would like to share with you, to me, what means worship. And to me, it's, the, uh, it's like when we eat food for this body every day in, this, in the same way worship God is to me, feed my soul in this inner uh, contact with my Father. And as Jesus said, silent receptivity. To me is open my heart, my soul, my mind to the contact with my father is an embrace of my soul to him, is dedicate all my being unconditionally to this transforming contact. And this has been a source of transformation in a so deep level that I cannot express with words. And it has happened to me what Lynn said, opportunities arise, and I never, never, ever felt prepared to these opportunities. But I, I was willing to, to serve my father, to serve God with all my heart. And even if I didn't feel prepared, I said to God, I will do it. Father, guide me, give me the strength, give me everything I need to serve you, serve my fellows. And uh, it, I always have maintained my communion with the Father every day, reserved to, to a part of my day, a little part of my day, to be with him alone and to listen him. And that has been a source of amazing, amazing things. I have received new capacities, uh, love, everything I need. And I know it has been our father who gave it to me. So I only want to share with you this experience because I think as Lynn also said, and everyone here has said, the book is the teachings, we have the instructions, but these instructions must become a living experience. As Bill said, George said, know him in our hearts by personal experience. Personal experience with him who is, be, uh, is uh, within ourselves. He is within, we need to feel, uh, feel him, to know him. And how we know a person? With uh, a conversation, in contact with this person and uh, allow him to express in ourselves. So to me, this experience has been the most loving and amazing, and I am so happy for being able to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. That's beautiful, really. Anyone else would like to share something before we go on with our lives? We pass in. Well, like some others, I'm not a shy person. Uh, some are shy and some are not. I am kind of a leader and I always was the first to run and the people would just follow me. Dancing with God showed me that 
first I had to know God and the more I knew him and the more I became confident in him. And then I uh, was still taking the lead. Yes. Maybe you could uh, close the camera and speak. Yeah, is it better like that? So, so. Vas-y, vas-y, vas-y. Well, I'll make, I'll make it short then. Um, I just want to say that now with knowing God better, I give him the lead of my life and he's taking the lead in the dance. And I did understand that when I pray, sometimes I don't get <laughs> what I want, but I just get what God wants me to have because I, I learned that he knows what my needs are. So I'm getting more and more confidence in him and his plan. And he uses me a lot because I ask him for to do his will. And the more we pray him, the more we worship, and the more we meditate, the more it becomes clearly where we are and why we are where we are. And I develop also humility because the ego is very, very strong in some of us. And me particularly. So I have all about it's a God. Part of us, how does it people? And I try very much to develop humility. When I do good in this world, I try never to get the credit for it, but only to give the credit to God. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Ah, Andres. Andres. Oh, thank you, Hello. thank you. Hello. Thank yes, you to yes. Jenny for organize, like always, thank you. Thank you to Lin for his experience of life has been shown to us today. Uh, be beautiful, the, I think the analogy to compare uh, dance with God with worship is a beautiful analogy, analog. Uh, I will promise to use to use it in the future, respecting the author rights. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, worship is is dance with God every day, all day for me, using your analogy. But we are imperfect beings. We we don't achieve to dance with God all day because we have problems in the office, problems in the street. Sometimes you have very strong uh, emotions that disconnect you from God. Uh, but, but I always try to think about Jesus. Jesus is always talking with his father every day, all day. He's asking, he is always asking, okay, my father will approve this action, will approve this thought, will approve uh, uh, this I am talking about to other people or myself. For me, this is a, a worship dance with God every day, all day, and to ask always Him if He agrees with my behavior, my thought, my actions. I was thinking about the, the question Jenny, Jenny talked about the technique that Kay talked about it before. Uh, for me, it's a very special, a very key sentence, maybe in the, in the chapters, in the documents that talk about the, the prey. They talk about that the body generates a lot of el electrochemical noise. And this electrochemical noise is very high and avoid in most of the cases to connect with divinity to connect with uh, adjuster, to connect with angels, and they they aren't able to transmit. They want to transmit to us how how to to low this electrochemical noise because it's part of our body. Is to avoid strong emotions, 
to avoid to have very big uh, digestions or indigestions, depends of, uh, try to, try to be in a quiet environment when you pray, when you relax, when you uh, make yoga, everything, th this, this, these techniques help you to lower the electrochemical noise and then let the spiritual entities to connect with you. It's everything I want to, to say. Thank you, Andres. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Lynn. Um, anybody else would like to add something before we, we close? Uh, if not, I would like to read something. Um, it comes from the book of Eileen Caddy, which is The Opening Doors Within. And it's quite in relation with what we have been talking about today. So it goes like this. Let the power of the Spirit shine in and through you, creating around you a world of beauty, peace, and harmony. When your outlook on life is optimistic, you lift all those souls around you, giving them hope, faith, and belief in life. You will always find that little attracts that you will always find that like attracts like, that your optimism will create optimism and will snowball. There is always hope in life, even if but a tiny flickering spark to begin with. When it is surrounded with hope and love in the right atmosphere, then tiny spark will be fanned into a flame and it will grow and grow until you are on fire with the fuel of the spirit, which is unquenchable and inextinguishable. Once it has been ignited, nothing will be able to stop it spreading. So, my loving friends, I thank you so much for attending today to the Divine Dance as a challenge and a joy. Yes! <laughs> thank you very much. Beautiful. I love it. Thanks, I love it. Thank, Thank you. you to you, Lynn, and uh, have a good day. Buen día. Adios. Buen día. Adios. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Lynn. Much. Thanks, Lynn. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.